A very good morning to all our distinguished guests and participants and very warm welcome to this two-day MQH Best Practices competition. We request the dignitaries to please join us on stage. Our chief guest, Mr. Joy Chakrabarti, COO, PD Hinduja Hospital and Medical Research Center. Our vice president, Mr. Ashish Vair. Mr. Suresh Lula, chairman of the IMC Quality Improvement and Technology Committee, and Mr. Ajit Mangrolkar, Director General, IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Please join us on stage. I now request Mr. Ashish Ved to please present the welcome remarks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Chief Guest, Mr. Joy Chakravarti, Mr. Suresh Lulla, Mr. Ajit Mangrulkar, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry and its Ramakrishna Bajaj National Quality Award Trust, I have great pleasure in welcoming all of you to the MQH Best, Quality Competition, Best Practices Competition 2019. My special welcome to our Chief Guest, Mr. Joy Chakravarti, COO, PD Hinduja Hospital and Medical Research Center. Incidentally, they were the winner of this award twice before. I just uh, learned that. Mr. Joy Chakravarti completed his post-graduation in healthcare management. He has undergone advanced executive education from Harvard Business School in managing healthcare delivery. Mr. Chakravarti is currently chairman, healthcare initiatives of CII Western Region, president, voice of healthcare Western India, member of the National Healthcare Committee of CII, Secretary of Association of Healthcare Providers of India, Member of Advisory Board of Healthcare Programs, IIM Calcutta, Member of the Industry Academia Board, XLRI, Jamshedpur, and he's also currently member of the Harvard Business Review Advisory Council. Mr. Chakrabarti has been awarded the Rashtriya Samman Award by the National Education and Human Resource Development Organization. I don't think we could have had a better chief guest for an event like this. Thank you, Mr. Chakrabarti, for being with us this morning. The MQH Best Practice Competition invites submissions from organizations across sectors of manufacturing, service, education, healthcare, and small business. All participants had to go through a first level assessment of the submissions. The panel comprised of members of the IMC Quality Improvement and Technology Committee and examiners. This year, we will have 40 best practices being showcased over, two, over the two-day competition. It will be a great learning experience for all present. As Steve Jobs said, be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. Just a little brief about the IMC. It was set up in 1907. The 111-year-old IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry is a premier chamber of trade, commerce, and industry in India. It has 2,500 direct members comprising a cross-section of business community, including public and private limited companies, and over 211 affiliated member associations through which the chamber reaches out to 250,000 business establishments in the country. IMC is the first chamber in the country to get ISO certification in India and the only body of its kind which had the privilege of having Mahatma Gandhi as one of its members. We are committed to provide quality service to the country as a whole in the areas of economic, monetary and trade policy so as to achieve rapid national economic growth. We are fortunate to have two union ministers, Mr. Piyush Goyal and Mr. Suresh Prabhu, who are our active managing committee members. IMC's Ramakrishna Bajaj National Quality Awards has rapidly become a symbol of excellence by creating the general awareness that quality is the only feature which helps beat competition. The motto of late Sri Ramakrishna Bajaj was trust in quality and business ethics. During his lifetime, he not only led the Bajaj group to the highest pinnacles of glory and prosperity, but also spearheaded the quality movement in the country in several ways. The IMC Ramakrishna Bajaj National Quality Awards Trust was instituted with the help of the House of Bajaj in 1995, and the first cycle of the awards began in 1997. Since the inception of the awards, over 700 organizations have applied, and over 500 of these organizations have gone through the evaluation process. Apart from the quality awards for organizations, we have the IMC Duran Quality Medal, which is presented to an individual who serves as a statesman for quality leadership in India. 
the IMC Durand Quality Medal is the most prestigious recognition for an individual who has integrated the tenets of quality in his personal self and being, in his thoughts and his actions, his philosophies and his values. The award has the distinction of being named in honor of late Dr. Joseph M. Juran, Quality Guru. This year, the winner of the IMC Juran Quality Medal 2017 for Individual Ex Excellence is Mr. Rajiv Bajaj. Mr. Bajaj has enabled effective uh, transformation of his organization through an outstanding demonstration of leadership combining statistical thinking and management. The application of the scientific principles of homeopathy and yoga to the task of building a brand-centered strategy is commendable. The winners of the 2018 IMC RNBQ Awards and the IMC Juran Quality Medals will be presented with recognitions on the evening of 15th March, 6 p.m. onwards in this very hall. That is tomorrow evening. We extend our warm invitation to all the competing organizations of the MQH Best Practices Competition to please join us tomorrow at this awards ceremony. I now would like to present a memento to our chief guest, Mr. Chakrabarti, as a token of our respect and regard for him. <laughs> Mr. Suresh Lula, our co-chairman of the IMC Quality Improvement and Technology, makes his pre presentation, uh, he has been our chairman since 25 years, this is his 25th year, so I think he deserves a, big, deserves a very big applause. May I request him to please take over the proceedings for the morning. Thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> Good morning, friends. Can you hear me at the back? Welcome to Making Quality Happen. As the subtitle says, it's a best practices competition. It runs in parallel with the IMC Ramkrishnan Bajaj National Quality Award competition. I'm going to take you through a story, a fable. And a fable, as you know, is partly facts and partly fiction. But this fable is substantially facts. The quality fable that follows will demonstrate that cost of poor quality in any organization is very significant. I'm being polite in saying 20% of cost. Experience shows it can go as much as 40% in service industry. The byproduct of quality improvement is cost reduction. You don't go for cost reduction for the sake of cost reduction. You need to improve quality and reap the harvest of cost reduction. And a win-win partnership between a manufacturer and supplier generates profit for both. Over 60% of your cost of poor quality comes from purchase. So it's very important that you have good relationships between a manufacturer and a supplier. So the title of my fable is Purchase Department as Quality Consultant. What do you purchase from vendors? You'll have the answer at the end of the fable. <laughs> I was invited for an annual vendors meeting two decades back. Nobody had heard of vendors meetings. You only heard of dealers meetings. So I was excited and I readily accepted the invitation. The invitation being extended by, I will now reveal the company name because it doesn't appear in my story, but I will reveal it. It was Maruti. I was excited to meet the Japanese. The meeting was held at the Taj Palace Hotel. The most prestigious convention room was there. 
and seated in horseshoe seating were vendors, A category vendors, 200 of them in one large convention room. Seated in front was the managing director of that time, Mr. R.C. Bhargava. And to his right were two people from Maruti, from Suzuki. And on the left was a vice president from the Juran Institute and myself. Mr. R.C. Bhargav stood up and started addressing the vendors. A warm welcome to all our A category vendors. Thank you for your contribution to a very successful year, even in these turbulent and inflationary times, two decades back. We are appreciative of your product quality and timeliness of deliveries. On behalf of my company, I would like to see each of you prosper and grow. Tali. And then he said, therefore, from next year, we would like each of you to drop your price by 3%. Oh, my God. You want us to prosper and drop our price. He carried on. I have trained my executives in the purchase department on quality improvement and cost reduction. Each of them will adopt a few vendors. Their mandate is to improve your process capabilities by solving chronic problems, what we refer to as quality improvement. The total cost in a company, 10% of that we will reduce. For each of you, we will reduce 10% COPQ. Of that, you keep 7% and share 3% with me. Does that make sense? Can this be true? The COPQ in any of your companies is likely to be over 20% of your total cost. We're only talking of halving it. Thereafter, the Japanese explained that quality management is about horizontal processes, cross-functional processes, that deliver to the customer. The head of the Duran Institute, or the representative of the Duran Institute, explained the concept of control and chronic waste locked in your control, and the need to do project by project improvements to reduce the chronic waste, and that becomes a gain. On my part, I explained how to do a problem solving, symptom to cause, a diagnostic journey, cause to remedy, a remedial journey. So now what is the answer to the opening question? What do you purchase from Vendors, can I hear? What do you purchase from vendors? Absolutely, process capability. Process capability is to quality management what budgeting is to financial management. With an ill-defined budget, can you be sure of profit, with an incapable process, 
can you be sure of customer satisfaction? Lessons learned. Top management budgets for chronic waste in cross-functional processes. We are quite generous in allowing a degree of failure, variation will happen. The byproduct of quality improvement is cost reduction. COPQ in any organization is over 20%. The purchasing department should serve as a quality improvement consultant to vendors. Is this a best practice? Yes, it is. Organizations purchase process capability of vendors. Is this a best practice? Win-win partnerships between purchaser and vendor. Is this a best practice? Transparency in joint costing. Is this a best practice? Are you beginning to see what a best practice is? Can you see the difference between a best practice and a quality improvement project? A quality improvement project simply takes you from symptom of a problem to cause to remedy. Your remedy may incorporate a best practice. Purchase department must conduct itself as a world-class customer. Walk your talk, we say, right? You expect your customers to behave in a certain way. Is your purchase department conducting itself as a world-class customer? Best practices are those practices that have been shown to produce superior results selected by a systematic process and judged as ex exemplary, good, or successfully demonstrated. Dr. Robert Camp, the guru of benchmarking. Thank you. We now request our chief guest, Mr. Joy Chakrabarti, to please give his keynote address on making quality happen. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Ashish Ved, Vice President, IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. One of my seniors, and we call him as quality guru. We have learned a lot, and has already been mentioned that he is here for the last 25 years, and that is not the industry experience I have. So, Dr. Lulla. Then we have <coughs> Mr. The Ashish Ved and the Director General of IMC. The judges, the examiners, the prize winners, and IMC officials present here today morning. It is my pleasure to be here in this morning, though I have been called as a chief guest, but the point is I am part and parcel of this IMC. Even today, during introduction, the point which has not been highlighted, I am also a member of the IMC Quality Improvement and Technology Committee, and I have the privilege to work with some of the doyens in quality field. My sincere thanks to IMC for inviting me in this occasion. 
And before I get into my talk, I want to tell you that my memories go, go back exactly 11 years back, 2007, when the healthcare category in IMC Ramakrishna Bajaj Award was introduced. Hinduja Hospital applied for that award. I moved to Bombay in March 2007 and April 2007. This is something what came to my table and we thought why don't we take this as a challenge and let us do it. And in the first year of introduction of the quality uh, in healthcare category, we got the award and I had the privilege to come and sit amongst the audience and presenting some of our best practices in 2008. Subsequently, even 2017 we applied and we got the award in 2018 because the reason was we wanted to see the journey, what we have taken 11, 12 years before, where do we stand, whether we have progressed, and most importantly, when a third party external assessor, they come and evaluate what do they think about us. Let me tell you, in 2007, 8, 9, when we took several, you know, quality initiatives in Hinduja Hospital, and we are getting, we are achieving some of those, we felt that we are the best, and several third-party external organizations given us that kind of, you know, feeling that, okay, you have achieved whatever you wanted, but in between in 2014, which I didn't mention, again, we applied for this award, but we didn't get it. We became the, you know, we got the certificate and we didn't get the award. And that was an eye-opener, and that is the, you know, point from where I want to start. We got very nicely written report after the assessors, after the, you know, examiners, they visited us, and there we happened to see that there are several areas, there are many areas where we have scope to improve. We started learning from some of the best practices, not necessarily from healthcare. We started taking learning from some of the other industry leaders, some of the other sectors, and we have seen subsequently that has added tremendous value that has significantly contributed in our, you know, improvement in the process and outcome. Today, I have purposefully kept my topic for the keynote as making quality happen, the theme of this event for this today and tomorrow. Very often, people like us, when we are in our day-to-day -day operations, we try to run our organization, we may not pay adequate attention to the minor intricacies, minor issues, which needs to be paid attention. But it is very important that we don't become we don't work in silos and we don't concentrate on some of these features. I'll take one of the best practices which has been, in fact, identified as best practices during this uh, IMC award and subsequently when we applied for best practices award. And I'll tell you how that has significantly contributed in our journey of ensuring quality in healthcare in Hinduja Hospital. Many of you, those who are from Mumbai, you know it is a very old, iconic hospital and it was established way back in 1951. But the real leap or jump in terms of the growth and development came in the year 1986 when that big tower, which is iconic tower, when you cross, you might have noticed, came up. During that time, the private healthcare was not that established, not that recognized, or not that big what we see today 
in the presence of many corporate sectors entered in the healthcare sector. So our chairman at that time, he brought a concept that hospital must have a full-time consultant-based practice. Today, very rarely we will get to see that as a practice in some of the leading hospitals in this city or even other cities in this country. So what he did, he went around the globe and identified Indian doctors who are really talented and who wants to come back provided they get adequate exposure, they get adequate infrastructure in this city. And he ensured that they come back and as a result of that, today in our hospital, we have most of our doctors, rather 85 to 90 percent of them in most of the basic and super specialty areas who are practicing as a full-time consultant. And what it has resulted into? It has resulted into three, four things. The first, when we see in this same city, the turnover or the doctors when they move around hospital to hospital and the percentage is so high, in our hospital it is next to nil. The second thing, by virtue of the full-time association, we have given doctors a significant amount of support to improve their knowledge, skill and education and hospital is supporting in that endeavor. So what it happens, so if a doctor is there for a long time, they are supported by the hospital and as a result of that, their skills, their knowledge, their techniques goes up and we support their endeavor by getting latest and new technologies. Third thing what happens, which is the most important thing, today if I have a patient in the hospital who is expecting the doctor to visit two times, three times in a day because of some complexities, they get to see their doctor on the same day multiple times, which gives them a huge amount of satisfaction, mental you know, relief from their pain and agony, which results into better outcome. And that is something I wanted to highlight, that that is your quality care with a better clinical outcome. And fourth thing is, when you have better quality outcome, clinical outcome, doctor, patient satisfaction, that indirectly and directly the way Mr. Lula was sharing the story of Maruti, that results into better business case. But we didn't want to, you know, restrict, we didn't want to see that we are stopped there and we didn't want to be complacent on that. We have challenged ourselves time to time in several endeavor and we have started working towards excellence. And what we have done? Because quality is something you are working, you are conforming certain standards, somebody is coming and recognizing or you yourself, uh, you know, satisfying yourself by saying that you have made certain requirements. But excellence is a continuous journey. I want to share with you a short story, probably one of the most discussed and most known story among the quality leaders like all of you who are sitting here. It is a story about a <clears throat> guy who was, you know, making a god sculpture and he happened to meet a person he came and saw this man was very busy and making very minutely the you know sculpture of the god idol and he uh, he happened to see that next to that he has something like same kind of uh, you know idol lying down so he asked do you need two of the same gods uh, thing in this same temple the sculptor told no then why you have one and you are still making one? So that man told, he was busy in his work and he told, when I was about to finish the earlier one, I happened to see 
there are some scratches on the face of the earlier idol. And then he asked, so what? Where are you going to put it? So he has shown it is going to be 25 feet above the floor level where this culture, is, where this idol is going to be placed. So he told, if it is going to be 25 feet above, then what is going to bother? Who is going to know? Who is going to notice this minor, you know, uh, minor issue? He told, even if it is not anyone, I myself will know. So when I do a job, I need to do it so perfectly, I need to do it so passionately, I need to do it so minutely that I remain happy. And that is the endeavor for excellence. And most importantly, why I'm taking this example in our case, we strongly believe that whether it is quality, whether it is any activities, whether it is your journey, you must satisfy yourself and your journey should not be altered, should not be impacted by thinking that someone else is going to monitor. So when you do the thing rightly, even if somebody is not noticing and doing the right thing, then only you are doing the right job. And that is excellence. So in our journey towards excellence, I have few stories or few, you know, examples to share. In our hospital, again, one of the thing is, we realized we are in the business of managing sick patients and their relatives who are not, may not be emotionally that stable always. So what we did, we have not, in today's world, we have not outsourced any of our services to any external agencies. Whoever is working, whether it is security, whether it is food service, whether it is housekeeping, each and every employees are directly employed by the hospital. The question may arise, is it not that you are foolish, you are going to increase the indirectly the cost of your operations? The answer may be, but in long term, it gives us a lot of mileage, lot of benefits. And why and how? Because again, the hospital stands on one of the major, you know, pillar or the uh, thing called family or parivar culture. So in a parivar, if you have some people who are coming and going as an outsource and some people are directly part of the parivar for a longer time, they may not jail. So as a result of that, we want to keep each and everyone as a part of the full-time employees. And what it gives? Again, you'll be surprised to know my overall hospital employee turnover is not in double digit, which is not the fact in many of the other, you know, organizations in our same sector. But what we did, we didn't stop ourselves there. We are the first hospital in this country, as I'm taking one example of uh, food service, when you have something internally managed by internal people, there is no external authorities, there is a chance of compromising in terms of quality. There is a chance that it may not meet the standards. So we are the first one in this country among the hospital sector to go forward and apply for something like a HACCP certification for the food saf safety, which typically you get to see in five-star hotels and places like that, not very common in hospitals. And when you went for that, we realized again, there are many loose ends which needs to be, you know, tightened the way uh, Mr. Lula mentioned about supplier vendor. So our responsibility started that how the supplier is procuring and storing things till the time we are disposing the things from our premises. So we worked in that continuous, you know, uh, endeavor and ensured that we remain best in our sector, in our industry, but also at the same time, we benchmark ourselves with the other industry leaders also. So like that, we have several of those initiatives which have ensured that best practices are nurtured, inculcated, 
and infused amongst the employees and they also come out with best practices in their department. We look at excellence rather than, you know, doing the mundane job in a traditional way, in a regular manner, in a regular process. And as a result of that, our continuous aim remain that how do you ensure excellence as a habit and not as a sporadic incidence. So excellence has become a habit in our hospital and it is not a virtue. Thank you very much for your presence here. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful insights. It was truly valuable. The IMC RBNQA examiners are the true ambassadors of the award process. They showcase the true spirit of the assessment process, adhering to timelines, following a strict code of ethics, following a guiding approach to organizations, and assessing organizations with a fine balance of meeting the criteria requirements and the overall context of the organization. We thank our examiners for their dedicated support and expertise. The 360-degree appra performance appraisal of our team of examiners for 2018 have presented exemplary performers. We are proud to recognize this strength of ours. We present the Certificate of Excellence for Effective Team Leadership, requesting Mr. Deep Mehta, partner, Luxor Electronics, to please come forward. Oh, sorry, before that, I am extremely sorry. May I request our dignitaries to please uh, uh, come forward out of this dais? Thank you so much. Mr. Johnson George, Director and Proprietor, Mexis System. Mr. K. A. Kunjumon, General Manager, Product Dispatches, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. Mr. L. Ravi, General Manager, Projects Planning, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. Dr. Mini Panikar, founder, Sahabhav. Mr. Rajakopal Mukundan, consultant, quality solutions. Mr. Ratin Khandadia, Associate Director, Global Center for Education Excellence, Global Indian International School. Dr. Sandeep Shenoy, Director, Quality and Compliance, Manipal, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Mr. Shailesh Godekar, Head Corporate Quality Assurance, Marico Limited. <laughs> Ms. Suman Pai, trainer, writer, speaker, and also faculty for IMC RBNQA. <laughs> Dr. Vishnu Kanare, proprietor, VK Kanare and Company, Kanare Consultants, Private Limited. We will now present the Certificate of Excellence for Effective T Team Performance to Ms. Amisha, Head Operations Sahaba. Mr. Durga Prasad Bahudoda, Senior Lead Manager, Corporate Quality Assurance, SL Propac Limited. Mr. Heman Shidai, Senior Consultant, Shop to Top Consultancy Services. 
Mr. Hemkant Deshpande, consultant. Ms. Jisa Vinci, Quality Executive, Marico Limited. Mr. Kailash Asher, Proprietor, Deep Training and Consultancy. Ms. Manjula Mani, Consultant. Mr. Praveen Rameshlal Jain. Mr. Praveen Rameshlal Jain, Technical Director, Data Serve Infotech Private Limited. Mr. R. Ramamirth Ayer, Director Consultant. Nirmal Industrial Controls Private Limited. Mr. Ramagauda Patil, Head and Promoter, Senior Consultant, ISEEE, that's Integrated Services, Enabling and Enhancing Excellence. Ms. Sadna Ghosh, Adjunct Professor DSIMS Malad. Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, Assistant Vice President, Marketing Operations and Planning and Logistics, Reliance Industries Limited. Mr. Siddharth Naik, CQA Manager, Marico Limited. Mr. Umesh Shetty, Business and Service Excellence, HDFC Life. Dr. Vaidehi Sriram Daptadar, Principal, Adarsh College of Arts and Commerce. Dr. Yasmina Kersi Awari, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Life Sciences, Retired Jehan College. Okay. Thank you. I would request the dignitaries to please stay on. Uh, the MQH Best Practices Competition with 41 shortlisted organizations has been made possible with the immense support of our team of assessors who took on the assessment despite their busy schedule. Our sincere thanks for your valuable contribution. We are privileged to present a memento to all the MQA assessors for 2019. I request the assessor teams to please come forward, starting with Mr. Deep Mehta, partner, Luxor Electronics. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Johnson George, director and proprietor, Max System. <laughs> Mr. K. A. Kunjumon, general manager, product dispatches, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. Mr. L. Ravi, General Manager, Projects Planning, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. Mr. Rajagopal Mukundan, Consultant, Quality Solutions. Mr. Ramagoda Patil, Senior Consultant, ISEE. Mr. Ratin Khandadia, Associate Director, Global Center for Education Excellence, GIS. Mr. Shailesh Godekar, Head Corporate Quality Assurance, Marico Limited. 
Ms. Suman Pai, trainer, writer, speaker, and faculty for IMCR BNK. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank our dignitaries. Uh, you can please join us on this stage once again. Uh, we will now uh, wind up the inaugural session and uh, we are having a tea break.